All right, this is exciting. We're going to Redbird's Hideaway Card Room and Restaurant. Uh, we're gonna play in the Andrew Nimi and Brad Owen meetup game tonight. So we got a two hour drive, got some Joe Rogan, Elon Musk podcast for the ears, and it's gonna be a good time. See you there. We're in middle position. We looked at it, King Jack off suit, and we call a raise to 20. 10, Jack, 3, Rainbow. We have top pair and good kicker. She leads out 35, and we make the call. So the turn brings a nine, and she decides to check it over to us. There's definitely some straights I got there. King Queen got there. Seven Eight got there. I don't think she has that. I think she has a ten. Uh, so we decide to bet out fifty, and she thinks for a second and makes the call. So the river's a three, which doesn't change much. Like I said, I think she has a 10, ace 10, or king 10. She checks it over to us, and I think for a second, and I check it back. Uh, and I think that's a mistake. I think in this spot, I think I have top pair, good kicker. I think I need to get some extra value here. I think if I bet 60 or $70, she's probably going to call for a somewhat cheap showdown relative to the pot. Um, but I don't. I check, and I turn it over, and it's good. She doesn't show, and we scoop a decent pot. So in this hand, we are under the gun plus one. Brad Owen is under the gun to my right. He opens it up to 15. We look down at five, six of hearts, and we want to play a hand with Brad. So we call, and then three more players call. So we're going five ways to a flop. The flop comes, it's ace, ace, five. We pair our fives. Action checks all the way through. The turn card is the Jack of Clubs. It's checked to Brad. Brad bets 15. We make the call, and the small blind makes the call. So the river's a five, so we turn our pair of fives into a full house, fives full of aces. But obviously any ace is also a full house. Um, the small blind checks and Brad throws out a bet of 50. I think for a minute and I think about just taking a stab at this, seeing what happens. And I raise it to 125. The small blind folds and Brad thinks for a bit before raising to 300. Matt. 
Back. So after Brad raises the 300, um, obviously I think he's he's got the goods, he's got an ace, and I him and Hoff are a second, but there's no way I'm calling off the rest of my stack for to protect this stupid bluff that I did. Um, anyway, we end up folding, and Brad will show his hand. So there's one more hand I want to talk about, and a player opens to 20, three players call, and we call with queen nine of spades. And we call because there's already $80 in the pot, so we're hoping to smash this flop. The flop comes queen, 10, eight, and the player leads out for 65. The other three players fold, and it's to us, we call the 65. The turn brings a nine, so we have two pair, and he instantly bets out 200. Uh, he has he has us covered by quite a bit. We have about 350 behind. So if we call the two, we're gonna be left with 150, and so we might as well fold or shove. So I thought about this hand a lot, and I, in that moment, I think it's good. I think two pair is good. I think he's playing aces and kings this way. I don't think he has a random straight. Uh, I don't think he's playing a set this way. He played strong pre-flop, and I think he I think he says aces or kings, but. The biggest problem, and this is where it, it really frustrated me, is that I, I'm playing underrolled in this game, and I was playing scared. I think if I have a bigger bankroll and I am able to rebuy into this game, I, I make that call pretty easily, or I shove pretty quickly on that. Um, but I knew if I lost that hand, I was going to go home. Oh, just anywhere you want, man. It's your shirt. Uh, Andrew and Amy is going to sign my shirt. <laughs> this is happening. It's not weird at all, right? I my nipple, though. <laughs> 